Morning everyone, this is Casey with Kusha Collectibles. I wanted to uh, briefly show you some common dollars that we bought recently. Um, as you can see, we have a 79cc in 64, an 89cc in XF45, um, a, where is it a, a VF20 93S. So just uh, very fortunate to buy some of these common day coins. Let's talk to you about how we got into this kind of deal. So I guess the topic of today is how you treat somebody will cascade into future deals. We were taught in theory that the way you treat somebody will have a positive effect on them and the friends that they have, right? So if you treat somebody well, if it's in a coin deal, if it's in a normal deal in your business, if it's in uh, the job that you have, right? If you treat somebody well, they will come back to you. They will come back to you with friends. So that's how we came about the deal that we have today. We treated somebody well, we treated somebody like a human, we had their best interests in mind, and we helped solve problems that they had, either with collecting or with coins that they were wanting to get rid of. We helped them. We've been cultivating this relationship because we care about people, we care about the hobby, we care about where people are going with their collecting. So we've treated somebody well for, let's say, six to eight months very well. And we're sitting down with him, getting rid of some of the coins that he's not wanting anymore with this set. And he tells us, well, I've been in contact with Jimmy. Let's say his name's Jimmy. His family doesn't want them, doesn't want the coins, and he wants to get rid of them. And I told him that you guys have treated me well, and you guys are the best for the job, so I'm going to connect you. He connects us, and we stand here today with... 60 plus Morgan dollars, a lot of wonderful key date coins because we treated someone well and they told their friends. So what does treating someone well mean? I have some notes here. What we've done at Akusha Collectibles to make a good living, a sustainable living, while also treating people well is we budget. Budgeting is very important with every business. If you budget well and you plan well, you can succeed. We keep very low overhead. You go to some of these shops, and that's their prerogative, but they have massive overhead. We can go into the psychology of overhead. If somebody has $150,000 in overhead a month, unfortunately impact how much they pay you. If you have, for example, like us, if we have $6,000 in overhead a month, we can afford to pay you much more because we don't have to pay the piper at the end of the month. I guess the last point to giving somebody value while also getting a balanced profit is you need to be constantly innovating. You need to be posting content. You need to be networking. You need to be putting the miles on the car. You need to be talking to as many people as possible. And in this innovation, you can't be the same as you were last year. In this innovation, create new avenues to sell, like for example with us, through our networking, we're able to sell at levels most people can't within the marketplace. And that allows us to buy at the highest point in the marketplace, treating you guys well on both sides. There's a lot of shops around the country that don't innovate. Not innovating ends up affecting their buy price and the public that they meet on a daily basis. So we are constantly innovating, challenging ourselves to be better so you can benefit. So let's take a few moments right now and we're going to show you guys just eight coins out of the 62 coins that we purchased last week from this collector. They're the best coins from the whole lot. They're coins that you guys would really love and what sophisticated collectors are looking for. So let's spend a few moments and take a look at those. All right, guys. So the first coin I want to show you is the Mac Daddy of Carson Cities. Apart from other few key dates, this one is exceptionally nice. This is an 1879 Carson City. Uh, it has a clean mint mark. It's not a capped eye. Fantastic gemmy luster on the obverse. A pretty expensive coin for someone, but it's uh, something that would be great for someone that's serious into Morgan Dollars. And I think this is the first one of this grade that we've been able to handle. We've handled a cap die in 64, but this one is phenomenal. We have an 1889 Carson City in XF45. You can still see some remaining luster on the coin. To be truthful, it's been cleaned a little bit a while ago, and they still called it market acceptable, which is okay. It wasn't harshly cleaned, just had a little bit of something that brought out the luster. Then we have this 1892 CC in 63. 
One of the better dates of the Carson City series, great white coin, pretty nice cheek for a 92, and I do enjoy the luster a lot. Then we have another very expensive sought after Carson City, which is this 1893. So when you talk to most collectors that have been working on a Carson City set, they're gonna be talking to you about the 93 or the 89. This one is expensive in mint state, but it's not too out of reach for someone that needs it for their set. This one has some hits kind of on the cheek and out in the fields, that's why it has that 62 grade. But I do think the coin is lovely in many ways. Then we have the 1884S Morgan dollar in AU58. You can see the subtle wear on the cheek, but you can still see that great BU luster coming through the coin. Sometimes you get a washed out AU58, but this one really has all the bells and whistles and you're, you're paying for an AU58. Sometimes it may look like a 55, and you don't want to pay that AU58 money for that. Then we have a coin, very tough in mint state. This is an 83S in 63. Most of these are going to be AU quality, but having this one with great luster hasn't been circulated, and just a phenomenal coin. I don't think we've ever, ever handled an 83S in mint state before. Very happy to share this with you guys. Then we have the key date of the San Francisco series, pretty much the whole entire series, the 93S and VF20. Mostly original look and uh, do love the coin. We have a few of these in stock, but there's somebody that's looking for a little bit more detail, and I think this one will hit that for you. Then we have an 1879-0 Morgan dollar. This one's in 65 plus, extremely hard to find in gem or higher. It's a $2,000 coin in gem. In 66, it's a $10,000 coin. So someone working on a registry set really will love this for their collection. And so just a few coins from this deal that we wanted to show you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are interested in meeting up with us at the Tampa Coin Show this September, we're going to be at table 1110. So stop by, check us out. We'll be uh, answering questions, buying coins, selling coins, just having a good time. So if you want to come out and see us, we'll be there. So when we're talking about becoming coin dealers, this is something that has to do a lot with the deal that we're talking about today. Um, the best people or the best dealers that I've come to know and learn from are the best problem solvers. So they solve three problems most times that most other dealers or collectors just don't want to put up with. And in the beginning, for us, it was kind of tough because you know, we would go to the coin shows, we would pay top of the market, we would make very little margin, but we would solve people's problems. You go up to a coin dealer and they say, hey, I've had this stuff for a while, I don't think I need it anymore, can you guys do something with it? And we say, we will solve that problem for you. Did it necessarily make us the most money or did it necessarily, uh, you know, speak to our audience and have people buy it? Sometimes not, sometimes yes, right? And so the three things that most problem solvers hear is I need, I have, or help me. So if someone comes up to you and says, hey, I need this coin from you, what can you do? Or hey, uh, I need you to look out for this coin, can you do that for me? The best problem solvers are the people that know what people need and know how they can make deals work together for them, for their customer, and from the person that they're buying it from. Uh, the problem solvers most times have the most amount of deals that they're working on at a single time. They're the most busiest coin dealers you probably know. Uh, a few great examples that I know is Seth Chandler, David Holcomb. Those are the people that we've kind of looked at and said, man, they're doing a lot of great things for the coin community. Um, the second thing is I have. So once again, a collector comes to you, I have coins that I don't necessarily want anymore. Can you do something with them? Or I have a coin dealer coming up to me. I have 90%. I have silver. I have gold. I have this. Can you do something for me? And that's where you step in and say, I'll do everything I can to solve your problem. And the third thing is, can you help me? So can you help me get in contact with the show coordinator? Can you help me talk to this person? Call this person. Can you help me on the phone talk to me about a coin that I might be interested in? And so as you start out, being a coin dealer, you have to be the biggest problem solver because most people don't see you as a problem solver yet. And so what we started to do, like we said with coin shows a few years ago, is we said, hey, we'll be the problem solver, we'll figure it out, but that has to go 
a long way when it, we refer back to the other points that we talked about, which is having your money right, having low overhead, and also being willing to chase it, right? Be willing to work very hard. We were at a few coin shows recently, and we spent a lot of money, bought a lot of great coins, and then we would walk up to another dealer that has been there for 20 years, and he goes and says, this, this show's slow, I didn't buy anything, uh, man, we're in a terrible market. You know, stuff like that. And I'm like, well, are you out there problem solving? Are you trying to fulfill these three things that people are looking for? I need, I have, help me. If you're not doing those three things and you want to become someone that does a lot of business, those things won't add up together, right? So you have to be the problem solver people are looking for because that's your job as a coin dealer and that's what will get you where you need to be. And when this, we talk about this deal, we're talking about sowing seeds over time. So, you know, in the beginning, you weren't able to buy the $25,000 deal that came to the coin show that was fresh. You could buy $2,000 worth of coins. You're just sowing seeds. You're just, you're getting a, you know, a handful of seeds out of the bag and you're throwing it and you're saying, if it lands and they like us and they trust us, over time, we can create a great connection. And then now we're able to cast more seeds, get things for better prices, able to pass them on to you guys for better prices. And so as you start to become a coin dealer, it takes some time, but it ends up being very fruitful for you if you are the person that wants to be ethical and wants to help people along in their collecting journey or in their dealing journey. So just a piece of advice from us. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the suggestions we had about buying deals like this or becoming a coin dealer yourself. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We got member videos coming out every single week. We want you guys to be a part. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in Tampa. We're probably gonna make some more videos between now and then. So make sure to stick around and support us when you can. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time.